Hi everybody, I'm Mr. Gates, and today we're going to talk about sound. Sound is one of my favorite subjects because I use it all the time. I'm a music teacher and I also write and produce audio for video games. So it's really useful stuff for me to know and I'm really excited to share it with you. Mathematicians, because they like to measure things, they like to draw sound like this because they like to see time going in a direction like this. Like time is only allowed to go that way. This is kind of a really abstract way to think about sound because the thing that's oscillating here is oscillating up and down. You can imagine this as a speaker, a little figure right there, as a speaker that's pointed straight up. As the diaphragm of this speaker is going up and down over time, that's what these lines really represent. When we think about sound and measuring sound, there's only two things you really need to think about. One is amplitude, and the other one is frequency. Amplitude is how loud or soft you're hearing something, and that's represented by the mountains and the valleys, the peaks and the valleys of your waveform. The higher the peaks and lower the valleys, the more your diaphragm of your speaker is moving up and down, the louder it's going to sound. If they're closer together, if, it's a, if they're little peaks and little valleys, that means your diaphragm is not moving as much, and it's softer. The way that we measure frequency is this word, hertz. When you put a number in front of that, that means how many times per second do we have one full oscillation? One oscillation being from the peak down to the valley, back up to the peak. If we do that once per second, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, I'm clapping at one hertz. If you squish these together, and your speaker is moving really fast, that means that your sound is gonna be higher. And if you spread these apart and you make it move slower, then that means it's gonna sound lower. Here we have a sine waveform, which is a specific kind of tone. Now, I would like to see if we could measure what pitch this is. So I have time written across the bottom in milliseconds. Keep in mind, we have a thousand milliseconds in one second. So our frequency from peak to valley back to peak, it looks like we do that once every two milliseconds. So if we have one oscillation every two milliseconds, that means that we are operating at 500 hertz. Now, I have no idea off the top of my head what note 500 hertz is, but thanks to the magic of editing, it will appear right here. I'd like to produce a tone that is quite a bit lower than the first tone that we had. The first tone was 500 hertz, and it sounded this pitch right here. I want to produce a tone that's 250 hertz. 250 hertz is exactly half as many as 500 hertz, which means that our next peak, instead of being at 2 milliseconds, is going to be at 4 milliseconds. So our waveform is going to be twice as long. And what that's going to do to our note is it's going to make it the same note, just one octave lower. Let's hear what that sounds like. The same is true when we multiply by 2. If we take our 500 hertz, multiply it by 2, and we get 1,000 hertz, that note is going to be one octave higher than our 500 hertz note. So it's going to sound like the same pitch class it's just going to be one octave higher. So let's listen to what that would sound like. Here's the 250 hertz, the 500 hertz, and a thousand hertz. All right, so now you know all the math behind it. Let's take a look and see what sound actually looks like. We experiment first with a tuning fork. When the fork is struck, its prongs begin to vibrate. What you're seeing right now is a graphic visualization of sound waves. With curved lines like this, I still find it really hard to grasp the concept. So let's look at some dots. Each one of these dots represents a molecule of air, and as you can see, it's oscillating back and forth at a constant rate! You might notice these little guys are going back and forth kind of like a pendulum would. This is what creates a sine wave. Do you like that little song? So sine waves can be kind of boring. Fortunately, we have synthesizers which can create lots of different waveforms. My hand will be moving to show you how the speaker would have to move to produce each tone.
A saxophone produces sound with this wood piece right here called a reed. The reed vibrates back and forth at a constant rate, producing a pitch. That is one pitch. When I change the length of the instrument by adding fingers, it makes the reed vibrate at a different speed, at a different frequency. And then your notes get lower as you make the instrument longer. When you oscillate your lips, you can play a brass instrument like the trumpet. You can make the trumpet longer also by pushing down the buttons. In this case, it channels the air through all these extra tubes. So this is a flute right here, and uh, to be honest, people, I have no idea how this thing makes sound. A saxophone has a reed that goes like that, and a, and a trumpet has your lips, which go like that. So there's something vibrating. But on a flute, there's I can't really see anything that's vibrating anywhere. You just blow across the hole, and it makes sound. So if any of you ever figure out or, uh, or do some research and find out how this thing actually makes sound, please stop me in the hallway and let me know because I'd love to hear an explanation of how this thing makes sound. But just like the saxophone, when you add fingers and the instrument gets longer, it makes lower notes. Oftentimes sound doesn't have a pitch because nothing's oscillating at a constant rate. I wonder what that sound wave would look like. Now, a clap is a percussive sound. It doesn't have a pitch. It's just one sound wave that flies through the air, hits somebody's eardrum, and says, oh, somebody clapped. But what would happen if we clapped 440 times in one second? What would that sound like? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Pause for a second. How could you possibly see me clap at 440 hertz when the frame rate of this video is only 30 hertz? I actually did loop and speed up my clapping sound to about 50 hertz. Did you hear a pitch in there somewhere? To me, the pitch sounds like... Okay, there's just one last thing I want to talk about, and that's the Doppler effect. It's the apparent change in the frequency of a wave caused by relative motion between the source of the wave and the observer. In other words, with this car horn example, the vehicle is moving towards you, so the sound waves are being pushed closer together, making the pitch sound higher. As the car is traveling away from you, the sound waves are further apart, making the pitch sound, you know. Hey, thanks for watching my video about the basics of sound. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm uh, just kidding. I don't have. Hey, everybody, I'm Mr. Gates, and. Just drink a pop. I'm gonna burp.